All right, this is version two of the speed shooting time lapse I made the other day. Um, some of y'all wished that I had done a video instead of time lapse, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'll start a timer. Stopwatch. Go. All right, I'm testing the new Autel Evo 2 Pro 6K. I love its image quality, but I really miss the uh, smart controller, the DJI smart controller, because my stuff is all about speed. I did configure the case that it comes with to hold the uh, controller with a tablet mounted. So that helps a little bit. Sorry, I can't see what the GoPro, the GoPro's on my head. I'm not sure about the framing, but I'm doing my best. I'll go through the whole shoot or as long as the battery on the GoPro will last. tablet is starting. See, this is why I missed the smart controller. This is two minutes of my life I'll never get back. Sometimes the app comes up automatically, sometimes it doesn't. There it is. Always open the app. I've done that about six times. There it is. Switch into photo mode. Looks like I have it on manual exposure from last night. Since I'm doing photos, I'll just put it on auto. Make sure my ISO is low. All right, now we're good. You guys can see it up in the air. I'll go back in the trunk so maybe y'all can see what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna get a few drone shots. This is sort of a luxury duplex type thing, but it's in a private club with a really nice golf course. So I'm just gonna cruise around and try to get some of the surrounding areas show it in relation to the club there's a nice swimming pool where is that here the evo 2 flies differently than the dji than my mavic 2s not better or worse it's just different it's uh it's taken a little bit of getting used to but the image quality out of this thing, particularly the low light image quality, is just remarkable. So for that, I'm gonna keep using it for a while. Probably until the Mavic 3 comes out. Where's that golf course? There it is. There's a nice shot of the swimming pool, the golf course in the mountains. The gardeners are all over this place. So, excuse the lawnmowers. All right, that's good for drone. Like the orange and black theme happens to match my company logo colors as hopefully you can see there 
every Phantom 2 and 3 I had, I painted gray, black, and orange. This white is my least favorite color. So at least I didn't have to paint this one. Let's see, that was four minutes and 50 seconds on the drone. My Gitzo Traveler tripod is nice and light. Arca D4 head is nice and light. Nikon Z7 II with a 15 millimeter Laowa shift is nice and light. Got a collection of triggers here. I'll use the Air 10S for this because it's my favorite. The sync cable. This sync cable is what allows the strobe to fire the camera. That's just got to go in there. I'll turn this on and I'm going to leave it on. I'll show you why in a minute. I'm going to turn the MG10 on. And I'm going to leave it on. Show you why in a minute. And go see how these gardeners are doing. One of my keys to speed is user programmable modes. Exterior shots are almost always a single exposure. I've got U3 programmed on the camera here for a single exposure. Shift this up a little bit and boom. At the garage area. Here's a little courtyard area. Gardeners are still working out here. Single exposure. Boom. Airplanes overhead. Man, it's noisy out here. Sorry, guys. Little entryway shot. This has got some deep shadows, so I'm going to switch to U1. That's my three exposure bracket. I'm in rapid fire mode, so I just hold the shutter down for a second while it fires off the three exposures. Here's the entry again. I got some deep shadow, so I'm going to keep it in this bracket mode. Hold the shutter down. Fire off the three shots. The client came in and turned on all the lights. We talked about that earlier in my last post. I have some clients that like for the lights to be on and if they like for the lights to be on, they can turn them on. Trying to open this double door for an entryway shot. There we go. Nice entryway shot with a view out there. Shift this down a little bit. Uh, I'm still in U1. I'm gonna get my ambient brackets, hold it down. One, two, three. I'm gonna go to U2, which is my flash exposure mode. I have this set at a manual exposure that gets my typical window views on a sunny day, so I rarely touch that. So I'm gonna fire one here in this foreground. I got a nice foreground lid exposure. I'm gonna go in here to this living room. I hide behind this corner. There's a nice white to bounce off of. Maybe go put one over here just for safe measure. Just firing into this white light corner. Oh, there's the camera right there. I better move. So I got two or three flash pops there. I can review them. One of those got it. I 
and close this door. U1 is my ambient brackets. Fire off three, one, two, three. And again, go into U2 for my flash exposure. Again, I'm gonna hide around this corner. The Nissan MG10 fires the fires the camera and the strobe simultaneously. I don't know if you guys can see that. Another nice angle of the living room. I'm gonna shift this down a touch. The notion that tilt shift lenses take long is a bunch of horse shit, as we say in Texas. Three ambient brackets, one pop. It's a nice living room exposure, flash exposure on the living room. Got one from this angle. This kind of shows the relation to the entryway. Shifting up again, taking three ambients. I can see the kitchen back there, but I know one of my ambient exposures got it, so I'm good with that. Bouncing into this beigey, light beigey wood ceiling is giving me a little bit of a color cast but this place actually is orange so not really bothering me that much it's gonna look just like it looks there's a dining room probably didn't need three ambient on that one would have done it but i had my finger on the button so i just held it down no problem okay sorry we got to get some more lawnmower here let me get a couple of shots of this patio. I'm gonna take three frames here because I got some deep shadow in the interior of the patio. Got a little pond out here going to U3. That's an easy single exposure. Here's a nice one looking back into the house. I'm gonna do three exposures, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna put a flash pop in here. Hi to the gardener. So I got the camera outside. I'm just putting a flash pop in this living room. That'll look nice. got this GoPro on a head strap. I meant to wear it on a chest strap. I don't know if that would be better, but I'll try that some other time. This is a nice feature here, this little display. I'll shoot it coming back this way. So it kind of looks into the living room down the hall. I'm gonna shift up again and one, two, there's my three ambience. Got, gonna put a couple of flash pops on this one right here in the foreground. And then really looking through the living room on this. So I'm gonna make the best out of that and just put a flash pop in there again. Cause that's a real feature, seeing the living room through this little art thing. Look like this could have been a dining room. Okay, the ceilings just got lower, so I'm gonna drop my tripod down a little bit. Shifting up, because I dropped the tripod down. Three ambient. This 
is kind of a recessed area right here. So I'm gonna flash off of this. I'm gonna bounce off of this wall right here next to the camera. If I put it up here, it's not gonna get into this area. So I'm bouncing here to go in there. There's a kitchen entry shot. Shows a little bar area. Walking into the kitchen. A few ambient there. Getting nice natural light here. I don't need a flash pot, but I would like to have one in the kitchen. So I'm gonna hide behind this post right here. Pop one there. It's a little breakfast nook area, one point composition here, lining up the, the, the window across the way there for a one point. Three ambient on U1, one flash on U2. Show what these guys look like, maybe you can see that. It's three ambient exposures and a nice flash exposure. Uh, this is a tiny kitchen, but I'll still, single ambient there is fine. There's no window. And a single flash pot just for the fidelity of the color of the space. Another angle of the kitchen. This one does have that adjacent area, but I can see on my ambient brackets that that nice, nice natural light in there is gonna be fine. I don't need to go add a flash pop over there. I will put one in the foreground for the kitchen. <clears throat> and Getting that adjacent area again. I'm gonna shift up a little bit. I brought the camera up and I'm gonna shift up a little bit. Three exposures, letting the ambient do the heavy lifting as my man Rich Baum teaches. And a pop in the foreground. All right, so we're just on to the bedrooms. This is a nice shot back here, actually. I don't remember if I took something like this. This is just kind of a bonus shot. I'm not gonna do any flash out there in the living room. It's got some really nice natural light in there. That should be fine. Oh, I wanted to also talk about a revelation that I had thanks to my brother from another mother down under, Daniel Blake. Uh, these Nikon cameras, you can, uh, the user programmable modes, I've talked about it, they, they're the deal. But you can also program the flash to fire or not fire. So I'm keeping my flash trigger on. I'm also keeping my flash on. They're on all the time. But in this, I've got this U1 mode, my ambient bracket mode, set to not fire the strobe. So when I take these ambient brackets, the trigger's on, but it's not firing because the program, the camera's programmed that way. Now when I go to U2, it's programmed to fire. So, boom. So I can just never have to touch the trigger, never have to touch any modes or dials other than the going from, basically going from U1 to U2. Here's a really nice view out of the master. I'm gonna show that. Again, U1 is not firing the flash. And then I'm gonna light these blinds up here. There's a truck back there I'm gonna let pass. And popping off another flash frame for that foreground light. Let's see what this bathroom looks like. Orange. Orange as hell. Hi. All right. And a nice view of the bathroom that's, that I'm not in. View back here. Ooh, it just got really quiet. Did you guys notice that? This bathroom only needs two ambient frames. I stopped it before it fired that last one. 
and a flash pop. Ooh, that's really orange. There's a little white area here I can kind of hit off of. Let's see if that worked. Yeah, it's good enough. It's orange, but shit, it's orange in here. It is what it is. My favorite saying. I say it all the time. It is what it is. Here's a little shower bath area. Three ambient frames, one flash frame. You guys are probably starting to get the hang of this by now. There's a bedroom. Mm, maybe shoot from back in this corner. U1, U2, done. The little courtyard out here too, is that? Oh, that's part of the entry courtyard. I got that already. All right, here's something different. It's not orange anymore, it's yellow. Three, ambient, one, flash. A little shower, I'll show that. I'm using TTL on my flash. The MG10 does really good on TTL. The Godox stuff isn't as consistent. It works on TTL, but if I'm using Godox stuff, if I have to need some more light, I'll switch to an AD400 or a 600 even. Um, and I will be much more careful with my TTL exposures. I've just been cranking out with this MG10 so long, I've just learned to trust it. I've got it dialed in at two thirds of a stop over, uh, which makes sure I get a nice bright fill laundry room. That's a single exposure, but I'll put a flash pop in here just because why not? I've gone this far. And here's a powder room. Look at that, it's orange. Photographed a place like this and one time and the realtor said, is there, well, the pictures look orange. Is there anything we can do? And I said, I could recommend you a painter. If I was half as funny as I think I am, I'd be on tour. All right, so that was it. That's 22 minutes total. You guys can see the stopwatch. 22 minutes and 40 seconds for a two bedroom place with drone and flash. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Peace.